Okay, so you've developed a strategy, it made it through your testing gauntlet, and now you're trading it live. At that point, you've made it, right? Mm, not quite. Personally, I've had periods where I've traded really, really well. I've had periods where I've traded terribly. Often things switch between the two quickly and without warning. And this usually happens right when you're starting to feel confident in the strategy. That's why I hate the term profitable trader and the people who try to claim that mantle after only a few months of trading, because it just doesn't reflect the reality of trading over the long run. It's a constant battle. Making money today doesn't mean you'll make money tomorrow or next month or next year. This is a problem that even the biggest algorithmic trading firms have. Jason Carroll of Hudson River Trading, who trades a substantial portion of the US equity market volume, says all of our models lose predictive power all of the time. So you can never rest on your laurels and you should always be iterating through the strategy development process often with multiple strategies at different stages of the process at the same time. Trading a strategy live is just the beginning and only introduces a whole host of new issues that you'll need to deal with, issues that few retail traders know much about, which is unfortunate because it's within these advanced topics that some of the greatest trading secrets are found. So let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Speculator Seth, and you are watching the last video in a four part series. So, if you haven't seen the other videos in this series, that's okay. Keep watching this video and go and watch the other three videos afterwards. Also, I want to stress that this video covers some advanced topics that I just can't do justice to in a video like this. So I'm going to give you a general feel of the topics that you'll want to look up. It's going to be up to you to do your own research from there, look up studies and read some books. Now, when it comes to maintenance, the issues that you will encounter are very much about being able to manage many different things at once. So before we get into the meat of this video, we have to talk about record keeping again. You should keep track of how different versions of your algorithm perform and you should save old versions of the algorithm. Now, many people do this in NinjaTrader by just copying the code, renaming the file of each copy, maybe adding a version number and adding some comments in the code about the performance and code differences. This is an easy solution that is useful if you're going to be running multiple versions at the same time to directly compare them. However, the best way to deal with the record keeping is to just use GitHub. Check in every major version of your code and include good commit comments so that you know what you've changed each time. You can even save your performance results to a file and track those in GitHub too. Now, I know GitHub might seem intimidating to those of you that have never used it before, but it is actually very easy to learn and use. Also, you should make use of the built-in log in NinjaTrader's Strategy Analyzer. So to use this, right-click on the Strategy Analyzer and select Show Log. This is something that not many users know about, but it makes it so much easier to directly compare different strategies. Now, why do we need this information? The unfortunate truth is that every strategy is going to have good times and bad times. That's why it's likely that you will end up making multiple strategies. When one strategy is doing poorly, the other strategy is hopefully doing well. You might also find yourself diversifying by trading different securities, which means that you're going to have to start looking at the combined effect of your trading strategies and holdings together. In particular, you will want to investigate how correlated your strategies actually are, because you don't want to run into a situation where all of your strategies are getting killed at the same time, right? Now, unfortunately, NinjaTrader doesn't have very many tools to deal with this kind of analysis. 
However, if you keep good records, you can still output the results to spreadsheets and then you can export this work to work with it in Excel or R. This is a subject that can get very complicated with lots of scholarly literature. So make sure that you include reading about correlation in your research sessions. Now, balancing out different strategies becomes even more complicated when you start worrying about position sizing. So as a strategy does as well, you'll want to size it up, but you'll have to balance that against the other strategies that you're trading. Otherwise, one strategy or allocation could end up presenting a larger risk than you intended. You'll also have to start considering the impact of the strategy on the market. My favorite subject. Once something starts to do well, the market has a way of sniffing it out and eliminating it, especially if it's something that lots of other traders will find and trade on. We want to trade the optimal number of contracts so that we maximize our profits, but don't tip off the market to our presence. Now, many traders will determine this optimal size by just testing the market. They'll keep upping their size until it seems that it starts to affect their stats and then they will back off a little bit. A better option though is to develop models to determine how much size you should trade given the current market conditions. Here again, there is a considerable amount of scholarly research about execution impact to help you out. And in particular, I want to point to the 1985 paper, Continuous Auctions and in Insider Trading by Albert Kyle. And this provides some key insights that I think every trader should know. This is a theoretical framework and there are a lot of equations involved that I'm not gonna go into on depth, but I will show you here on the screen. So I'm not saying that these equations will tell you exactly which size you should use. In fact, you'd only be able to trade a fraction of the size these equations suggest in a real market. However, what this model does do is it shows us some of the factors that matter. Long story short, the optimal size that you should trade is related to how far away your expected target is, the standard deviation of price, and the standard deviation of volume. So if there's not a lot of volume that day, you should probably reduce your size. This model can be extended and optimized in countless ways. So again, all I'm doing is showing you where the rabbit hole starts. From there, you'll need to look at things like resting liquidity, averaging into positions, and watching how the market responds to your trades. And this brings me to my last point, and that is, enjoy the process. The process of developing a strategy is a grind and it is probably going to take years before you have something that is truly effective. It's not so glamorous. It's certainly not as exciting as just trading on whatever whim you are feeling at the time, but it is the only way. So embrace the process and enjoy it. That is the only way that you will last long enough to have a chance in this competitive field. I hope this video series encourages you to work harder on developing your own strategies. I will see you guys when I stream every morning, 8.20 Eastern time. And in the meantime, stay profitable, friends.